Today we'll be talking about the Moon Phases and Tides project. In particular, I'm going to take you through um, steps one through three, and a little bit of step four, talk a little bit about the graph, but that'll probably be in a separate video altogether. All right, so on the directions page, obviously, <clears throat> if you have read through the directions, a big part of this project is to strengthen your um, Google Workspace knowledge, most notably your Sheets skills. Uh, so Sheets is a spreadsheet application, very similar to Microsoft Excel. Um, it's a very useful skill set to have, so that's why I'm including it as a big part of this project. All right, so the very first direction says determine the title range for each date using a formula in Sheets. So let's flip over to my example. I'm going to be taking you through how did I fill out this data table that you see here on the directions page. All right, so my sheet is going to look a bit different than what you will see when you open up the project, only because I just have the one data table instead of two. Um, and I'm using dates from August 8th to September 6th, rather than the dates you see listed on your project sheet. Okay, so very first thing we wanna do is fill in the values for the title ranges. All right, so your first thing to understand is what title range actually is. A range is just a difference in values. Difference indicates that we are subtracting the lowest value from the highest value. And because we're in a spreadsheet, we can use a formula to accomplish this. And all formulas start with the equal sign. So we click in the title range, cell, type in equals, and we can click in the high tide value for the specific date, minus the low tide value for that same date. Then we can go ahead and just click enter. And Google has very smartly figured out that we are going to do the, apply the same formula down this column of data. So it says suggested autofill. I'm gonna go ahead and click enter because it's less work for me. It makes this a more efficient task. All right, and then we can just take a look at what's going on in these cells. So how did it get 6.10 feet on August 22nd? So if we click on the cell, you notice that the formula is shown up in this top kind of formula bar. If we want to see which cells it's using, we can click in that and it will highlight each part of the formula in a different color. So B8 is the cell highlighted in orange. C8 is the cell highlighted in purple. We're taking the C8 value, subtracting it from B8. So 5.77 minus negative 0.33 is in fact 6.10 feet. That's how that works. All right, so it's a very easy way to figure out tidal ranges. All right, so formulas are a great way to use spreadsheets. If you have a lot of data, a lot of calculations, set up the formula once, apply it to the whole range, and you're in business. Okay. Next thing we're going to take a look at is the moon phase. And you might be asking yourself or saying to yourself, I have no idea what the moon phase is doing ever. How am I supposed to know what it's going to be doing on August 8th, 15th, 22nd, 30th, September 6th? Um, I have no idea. Well, that's a very simple problem to solve because you can look this up. Uh, if, you're, if you're accomplishing this or doing this project, you obviously have an internet connected device. So we can just Google it. So we're going to Google moon phases on these specific dates, or we can go slightly wider approach and say moon phase calendar. August 2021. I'm just going to navigate to Google here, or you can use any search engine that you'd like. So you can go to google.com, use the search bar, or just as a time-saving tip, if you're not aware of this, almost all modern browsers allow you to ask questions directly in the kind of search bar at the top. So I want to look up moon phase calendar. August 2021. All right, and this is going to give me a bunch of different options. I'm actually going to refine my search just a little bit. Um, so I want to use a specific website. I like to use timeanddate.com. I find that it has a lot of good information. I mean, it's also specific for New York because it will vary slightly uh, depending on where you are looking for. So I'm just going to open up Moon Phases 2021, the lunar calendar for timeanddate.com. OK, 
Okay. So here we see August 8th is going to be a new moon. And this just so happens. These are the upcoming moon phases. I'm filming this on July 20th, 2021. So August 8th is going to be a new moon. So I can come over into the spreadsheet and just type in new moon. Okay. So August 15th, 2021 through September 6th, where are we going to get that information? We go back to the timeanddate.com website. And here we have all of the, the new moons, first quarter, full moons, and third quarter moons listed for the entire 2021 calendar year. And so August 15th is going to be a first quarter moon. August 22nd will be a full moon. August 30th is a third quarter. And September 6th is a new moon. Okay. So armed with that information, go back to the spreadsheet and just fill out that information. So August 15th is a first quarter moon. August 22nd is a full moon. Then we have a third, sometimes known as the last quarter moon on August 30th. And September 6th, we go back to the new moon. Okay. So this is, again, not information you should know off the top of your head. You need to look this up according to the date that is listed. Okay. Now this last skill is a kind of little known skill um, in kind of the sheets world or Microsoft Excel. Uh, you can add images into specific cell values. Um, in this case, it's just to give you an idea of what do these phases look like, because that is fairly important in terms of kind of earth science regions and just kind of practical knowledge. If you look up at the night sky, you may look at the moon and be a little bit confused. You do have to associate the name with what it appears as. Okay, and this is also part of the reason why I wanted to use uh, timeanddate.com. So we have these nice little cartoon images of what the different moons look like. So we have first quarter moon, full moon, third quarter, and new moon. And those are the only four phases that we are going to end up using. So for August 8th, that was a new moon phase. So I want to use this particular image. Okay, so I can right click on the image and copy the image address. So again, that's a right click, and then you click on copy image address, and we're going to go back to their spreadsheet, and here we're going to use another formula. Okay. In order to use this formula, again, all formulas start with the equal sign, and we type in the word image. We open parentheses, and this next step is probably the most important thing, otherwise you're going to be very frustrated. You need to open with quotation mark or ellipses. You're going to paste, so control V is paste or command V if you're working on a Mac. Make sure you close the parentheses, um, close the ellipses or quotation marks, and then parentheses, hit enter. And there is our perfect little image of a new moon. Now, it's the same image that we're going to use for September 6th. So I can just come up here, should be able to copy the cell. So copy, paste, and we have the same image there. And so that's Control C, Control V, that's copy and paste. Now we need to, to fill in the first quarter, full moon, and third quarter moons. And so this is just a matter of going kind of back and forth between the two sites. So let's do the full moon next. And right click on the image, copy image address, go back to your spreadsheet, equals image, open parentheses, open quotation marks, paste in the link, close the quotations, and you don't even have to type the ending parentheses. You can just hit enter at this point. Um, Excel or Google Sheets in this case is smart enough to know that you are done with the formula. And there is our full moon. So the first quarter and third quarter, let's see how that's done. Again, right click, copy image address, go back, equals image. All right, so there's our first quarter moon, and then the third quarter, copy the image address.
Okay, so there is a quick and easy way to put in um, images with a formula. There is a secondary way to put images in here. So let's imagine you don't want to use the formulas for whatever reason. You can also click in a cell, come up to the insert menu, come to image, image and cell, and then you can use a Google search. So let's say I want to put in image of a new moon. Um, here we're just looking at uh, actual um, images for the most part. So this is a little bit dangerous in the sense that you need to know what a new moon looks like. Uh, this is not a new moon whatsoever. This is a full moon phase. This is a new moon phase here. So you have to be a little bit careful. Insert, and it should pop up here in a second. There we go. It just takes a little bit of time, uh, no, but notice the difference. So if I click on this cell, I don't see anything in the formula bar. If I click on this cell, this is the uh, source of the image. So this is the hyperlink that will take me to that specific image on the internet. All right, so I would prefer it be a little bit better to see where your images are coming from. So I would use equals image and then go from there. All right, and just to show you very quickly, how do you insert a graph? Um, if you would like to graph this using sheets, we need to graph the date, high tide, and low tide values. So you highlight that data, come to insert, insert the chart. And this comes up with a pretty crude uh, chart. Some things we can do to customize this very quickly. Under the chart style, set that to be smooth. It looks just a little bit better. And then chart title and axis titles. The chart title is pretty bad. So we can say, make this a title prediction. We can add in the dates and everything else later. So, so August, that's through, so August 8th through September. Would help if I could spell correctly. Through September 6th, 2021. It's a pretty good title. It's informative. It tells us exactly what we're looking at. Uh, it has a legend here. So other things we would need are some axis titles. So for the vertical axis, this is going to be the title prediction. That is going to be in feet. Right, I like to make my um, labels bold so they stand out a little bit. We can increase the size of this so it's not so cramped. All right, and there will be a second video showing how you can make some other changes to the graph because there's a lot of a lot of things you can to do to manipulate um, charts or graphs in Google Sheets. And that's a little bit more complicated, so that'll be a separate video.